Hey everyone! Recently I was thinking about the Game Boy. Such a great little piece of hardware. Kind of a revolution in the video game world, really. Everything about it is amazing, except its name. When you think about it, Game Boy is kind of a dumb, nonsensical name. Game Boy? Why boy? And so one thought led to another and I decided to make a video on console names. So let's start by the worst, because I'm gonna rank them from worst to best. The worst, in my opinion, can you guess it? I'll give you three seconds to guess it. The worst video game console name is the Ouya. Yeah shitty name for a shitty console. So for the longest time I always assumed that OUYA was um, an acronym, you know, that the letters stood for something. Maybe the O was for open source, maybe the A was for Android, but as it turns out I did a lot of research and it, it, the, the actual answer was actually hard to find. And it means nothing. It is apparently a creative transliteration of the expression oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah now the next in the list second worst is the wonder swan now out of all the animals that you would want to associate your console with a swan and preceded by the word Wonder? Wonder Swan, huh? So I thought maybe it was some weird Japanese quirk or a reference to a legend that we don't know about, but according to Wikipedia, Bandai chose the name of the system to highlight its aesthetics and technical capabilities because the swan is recognized as an elegant bird with powerful legs that aid its graceful swimming. But that's not on my business. Now next on my list is a couple of much more famous and successful ones. The Wii U and its mother, the Wii. Um, yeah. Everything has been said before about them, so I think we can move on to the next one, which is the Game Boy that I uh, talked about in the intro of this video. Why boy? Why why Game Boy? Like maybe maybe I could understand like if there was a um, living room console called the Game Man, and its uh, handheld equivalent was the Game Boy. You know that would be some kind of a theme. It would make kind of sense. It would still be bad, but not as weird as, you know. Next uh, on my list is the Atari numbers, uh, like the Atari 2600, the Atari 5200, etc. I always thought that these numbers represented something, like maybe the numbers of um, kilohertz uh, that the CPU was capable of or something like that, some kind of system specification. And as it turns out, no, those are just random numbers. So why 2600? Why 5200? Your guess is as good as mine. And next is the Engage, another ah, distressing memory from the, what, late 90s, early 2000s? Early 2000s, I think. Anyway, the Engage was in the era of extreme cool letters, and uh, it's just, you know, it's just embarrassing. Next is the color TV game. Now we have passed the uh, regrettable, nonsensical names, and we enter the tier of uh, lazy names. So. Color TV game. First, a word. When people ask you why the 70s were the best in terms of design, show them this. This is a beautiful object. 
it looks amazing. Uh, but we are here to talk about the names, and the Color TV game is a hell of a lazy name. Now, video games were not popular at the time, in fact they were just beginning, but um, still a lazy name, especially considering that the naming was kind of confusing, like the first Color TV game was called Color TV Game 6, despite being the first, uh, because it contained six different clones of Pong, or as Nintendo rebranded it, uh, Space Tennis, I think. And the next one was called the Color TV Game 15, and it's just weird. Next is the Nintendo Entertainment System, and its daughter, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, also named uh, originally the Famicom for Family Computer and Super Famicom for Super Family Computer. That's not exactly a bad name, but that's just lazy and uninspiring, in my opinion. Next is the PlayStation. Now, if it was like 20 years ago, I would have cut some slack to Sony, because it was originally supposed to be an accessory for the SNES. Maybe Nintendo chose the name and named it as, um, as you would name an accessory. Not a very exciting name, but what they did in the future, we all know that. PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Portable. The only one to have a real name is the Vita, but that's a weird name. I mean, it means life in Latin, but PlayStation Life? Life? It's... yeah, it's kind of weird. It's not lazy, but it's, it's not good. Next is Game Gear. It's a gear for games, yeah. Next is the GameCube. It's a cube that plays games. Yeah, nice, very nice. Next is the Nintendo 64. <laughs> We're doing all the Nintendo consoles because they really they make amazing games. I'm a big fan of Zelda, and I'm playing Super Mario on the 3DS at the moment. Uh, but yeah, those console names are really, really lazy and uninspired. So Nintendo 64, because it has 64 bits, when you just put the number of bits at the end of your console name, that's that's lazy and cheap. Uh, next is the Switch. Yeah, we're doing all the Nintendo consoles. Uh, the Nintendo Switch, because you switch from uh, handheld to living room console and, you know, vice versa. It's almost nice, but it falls short. Next is the DS. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the, yeah, the Nintendo DS, because it's it has a dual screen DS. And then the 3DS is not so bad, because it's kind of a pun between um, 3D and DS. But, yeah. Next is the Xbox. We're right in the middle, and it, it has kind of an interesting name. Uh, why? I have to sip some gazpacho first, because I'm going to give a long explanation on the name. And I'm sorry for the tech nerds who already know what I'm about to say, but I, I really need to give some context, so... Uh, So, the PC versus console war has been raging for, what, 20 years now? And the consoles have always had an advantage, is that they're cheaper. Why are they cheaper? Because they can do the same than a PC with lower specs, with simpler hardware. It's, there's no dispute, you cannot do the same with a $400 gaming PC than you can do with a $400 console. There is no contest. And why is that? Well, this is because of a thing called optimization. When developers work on a game for a specific console, they work for a very specific set of hardware that is fixed and it's not going to change. A specific CPU, specific GPU, and a finite amount of RAM. They can write the best possible code for a specific machine. On PC, on the other hand, there's a potentially infinite amount of configurations you can choose from a lot of different CPUs, a lot of different GPUs, 
you can have any amount of RAM that you want, and the RAM can be from different generations, you know. Because of that, you cannot really optimize a game for the PC. You know, you can do your best to write uh, good code, but, you know, there's a... Uh, it can only go so far. There has to be a layer between the hardware and the game that will help uh, translate the, the game code and, be, and ensure that it will work uh, the best possible with every hardware configurations that you can throw at it. And um, on Windows, uh, this layer, this middleman between game and hardware is called DirectX. There's also OpenGL, but right now the one that is made for Windows by Microsoft is called DirectX. In the early 2000s, uh, PC gaming was losing ground uh, because of the huge success of the PlayStation 2. People at Microsoft were worried of that, and so the, the DirectX team, uh, that's obviously gaming-oriented, uh, decided to make their own console. So they stripped down a PC, simplified it, and kind of reversed the process and put the whole thing on its head and made the best possible hardware to work with DirectX. And obviously they called it the DirectX box. But the guys at marketing thought it was way too long, so they made it short and it, cut it in the middle, and so it was just called the Xbox. It's the first console to be built like a PC, and it, it started a huge trend now. The PS4 and the Xbox One are built exactly like PCs are. It was the first console to have a hard drive in it, and, you know, it was kind of a defining point, so it's a name that is, you know, imbued with history. So it's an important name, uh, but sadly, the next console was called the Xbox 360, uh, which was a reference to the ring the circle that indicates you were the when the console stopped working. Not exactly a great um, memory, huh? And the third console is called the Xbox One. Gotta knock a bunch of points off for that. Uh, the next uh, on my list. Uh, the next on my list is uh, the Neo Geo. There is a reason, uh, once again, why it's named like that. The company that made it, called SNK, has always had a, a gimmick about new and future things. Their original slogan was the future is now, and the S in SNK stands for uh, future, I think. I'm gonna just, um, I got Wikipedia here. Um, Shin Nihon Kikaku, new Japan projects, new. Yeah, the S stands for new, and Neo Geo is Greek for new earth. Maybe it was a reference uh, to the uh, album by uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto that was really popular at the time. It's not a great name, but it's not a bad name. It's kind of inspired, it, it has a purpose, it has a, you know... Next is a <laughs> not very famous console, the Mega Duck. That was also uh, known as the Cougar Boy for some reason. So maybe you think I'm inconsistent because I, I was making fun of the Wonder Swan and now I'm praising the Mega Duck, but I don't know. Mega Duck, it's weird, but this time in a good way in my opinion. And the fact that it was also known as a Cougar Boy only makes it like weirder and, and it's funny. It's funny. And also, while I'm at it, I have I was I was not gonna talk about bootlegs and that kind of stuff, but I have to mention the PCP Station because it's named the PCP Station I gotta talk about it Next, uh, well, the PC Engine uh, that was uh, known as the TurboGrafx-16 in a couple of countries um, PC engine. It's it's kind of it's kind of nice. Like it's a kind of like a PC, but it has like an engine. You can rev rev it up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of cool. I 
Yes. Uh, next is the game.com. Now, I hated this name at first. I thought it was corny and ridiculous, but you know, it reminds of uh, when this console was released, the early days of internet, and uh, you would think that this name is dumb, but it was actually the first console to have an internet connection. That's why it was called game.com, so that's not as dumb as it sounds. It's not good, but I don't know, I like it. Deal with it. Next on the list is the Apple Pippin. I always thought that it was a reference to uh, Lord of the Rings, but no, it's a, it's a reference to an, a type of apple, a, a cultivar of apple, if you're into biology uh, or agriculture, and uh, that is the, the cousin of the Macintosh, that is also um, a type of apple, a race of apple, breed of apple, an apple, you know, like there's the Granny Smith, there's a Golden Delicious, there's the Macintosh, and there's the Pippin. And so the, the, the Pippin is um, very close to the Macintosh, so makes sense, you know, Apple had the Macintosh and then they make the Pippin console, and then the Pippin console that was based on a Mac failed horribly. And it, was, it was really ballsy of Microsoft to make the Xbox on basically the same premise. Um, but, you know, I think it's kind of a good name. Pippin. Apple Pippin. Makes you think about the Apple Pips. It's kind of refreshing. I don't know. Next is the Tiger R-Zone. Now, I know it's a shitty console. It was basically, um... It was basically a cheap ripoff of the Virtual Boy. Which I didn't mention, by the way. Oh, it would have it would have been right at the bottom of the list. Horrible, um, but yeah, R Zone was a horrible piece of hardware. But I love the name R Zone. It's kind of badass. It's kind of sci-fi for a console. It works. Next, the Mega Drive. Mega Drive. Yes. Now we're talking. So I know that in a couple countries it was called uh, Genesis but its real name and it was known in the whole world as the Mega Drive so I'm gonna call it the Mega Drive um, and actually I'm gonna address the Genesis names and, and when countries uh, give weird name changes to video game things in an upcoming episode so stay tuned uh, the Mega Drive is just a good name Mega Drive it has a drive and it's Mega Mega Drive yeah Next is uh, its mom, the Master System. What can I, what can I say? Master System. It's the Master System. That's badass. I think it's badass. I think it sounds badass. I'm trying to come up with a synonym, but I like the word badass. Next is uh, the Atari Lynx and the Atari Jaguar. Now, I thought they were released at the same time, but the Lynx is actually much older than the Jaguar. They were not the same generation. You know, they would have maybe had extra points if they had been released at the same time and the Lynx was the portable version of the Jaguar. But it doesn't really matter because those names are great. The, the Jaguar, you know, uh, startup screen is, is. I love it. Square! <laughs> it's dumb and it's cool and it's, you know, it's very 90s. Next is the Metal Intellivision. Now, Intellivision is a portmanteau of intelligent television and. I don't know. I think it works great. I think it's it's just right. Intellivision. No, I want to play that. Now I know that it's an old piece of trash, and the controllers are horrible, and the games are not great. But it's called Intellivision. Next is the Saturn, because you know it's a planet. 
planets are pretty cool, space and shit. And it's also a Roman god. That's also pretty damn cool, Saturn. It, it works, it works. And it had a cool mascot, Segatash Sanshiro. Uh, the, 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 I don't know if you've seen the commercials with Segata Sanshiro, but uh, uh, they made me really laugh. I love them. Um, next is the Magnavox Odyssey. Now the Odyssey. Now that's a great name for a console. It will take you on a trip, and it will be there will be hardships, and there will be beautiful things, and that's what that's what video games are about. It's the challenge. And it's the discovery, and it's Odyssey is a perfect name for a console. It's great. It's everything I want my console. I know it's an old piece of junk. I mean, it was before its time. It was really advanced for for uh, when was it released? 1979, something like that. Uh, it was amazing for its time. But yeah, Odyssey. It makes me dream, and it's exactly right. It's very fitting for a console in my opinion. And the winner is the Dreamcast. I mean, Dreamcast. Dreamcast. Do I really need to explain? Do I really, do I really? Do I, do I really need to explain? I mean, it's, um, the Dreamcast. Hell yeah, bitches. Um, well, that's it. I, I forgot to write a conclusion. <laughs>